well. And there's also, I believe, Vexed, who's recently come into MDL, and Wind and Rain as well. So we got a great match in front of us, Dal. Two up and coming teams. We'll see how it ends up playing out. It is Inferno. And right now, Wind and Rain are pushing all the way up quickly. Non stop. They're running into three defenders. This is going to be sick into Alex as well as Skrunk, who is now the first casualty oh. of the four back there. And it's two for two, still one man standing. He's going to end up getting dug out. And it's a 2v2 now. Immediate flank with light coming in from behind, but I think he was audibly heard. And now he's got a 9mm embedded into his forehead. Yeah, Astro just doing his due diligence there. Just checking the banana, making sure nobody's on that quick flank. He's able to catch light. Drops him down to 13 HP, and yeah, we got that two on two now. Wind and Rain set up in great spots here. Smart move from Astro right there to just forfeit that position, but he goes back for seconds. Ends up getting punished. I thought it was wise because he recognized yep. that he was being pre-fired by light. Better to just give up that angle, back off, and play set for the clock. The yeah, I, I thought I thought he was going to allow the coffin player to really just set it up, tuck in. Um, with the emo guy, right? At that point, you can just let the coffin player watch as they run in. You can peek off of him, knowing that they are committed into the site. But we see a little bit too much of an overextension there. And uh, Wind and Rain are going to fall 1-0 now for Friendly Fire to start this match. So with the bomb plant, Wind and Rain just bow out this round. Maybe a kill here or there with some P250s. It's mm -hmm. Fry and... Mm -hmm. Is it... Hemsk? Hemsk? Yeah, I'd say Hemsk. Hemsk? All right, I'm down for Hemsk. He's got a PT-50 up there as well. So right now, they're not really pushing their luck all that far. Uh, the apartments is as far as they've gone right now, and they're smoked off of the upper side of that one. So it's about to be some easy kills for friendly fire. They're using their utility still. Well, Wind and Rain are actually able to, rather than playing very, very fast and just throwing their bodies at the, the opposing side, they're forcing the CTs to use a lot of utility. Yeah, it's one way to burn cash. They haven't gotten down to the kills yet, but they're dropping 300 here, 200 there. And it's it's working out in their favor. That's just more that the CTs are going to have to rebuy next round. And if they get some kills on top of this now, Dal, I'm calling a successful round for the UK team. Yeah, Link just says, hey, thanks for the incendiary that came down into Boiler. All he's been doing is jumping at the corners and stuff. Rounds the corner. I think he even got a dink in there, but it's still not even 50 damage done to Patrick over on the B site, though. The SMGs oh. are lining them up. Through the smoke, they'll find the first. But here's Alex. One, two, make it a third. Great work from him to just make four or five bullet bursts for each player, knowing that they're unarmored. That's more than enough to be able to take care of uh, any of the bodies coming at him. Yeah, especially on the other end of that smoke. He's in complete advantage, so he has about a one-second reaction, you know, as the player comes through the smoke to actually take them down. Very easy round there for Alex. But we do have the gun round coming out, and we do have Friendly Fire sticking with the MP9 and two Famuses. So it's going to be interesting to see how these AKs, as well as this Kree here on Hems, actually come into play. Fast Ooh. play. Oh, Skrunk no. is just running them down. Looks like there was a triple molly out there, and they'll be able to smoke up bottom banana and make what? out like bandits. Yeah, they're going to recover the AK as well. Skrunk picks it up. And actually, Frey there towards banana. He thought that Molotov was going to push onto him, and he gets caught pulling out a smoke, and uh, that's actually when Skrunk catches him, just pushing down banana. Like you said, the double Molotovs keeps the T's exactly where you want them as well. Ooh, and Skrunk, he actually recovered a second smoke as well now from a dead Frey. Well, this actually might give some bad intel to Wind and Rain. When they see a third smoke blossom at the bottom of Banana, they might think there's three players out there. When, in fact, there's only one. Well, Skrunk right now, he's playing passive. Just to spot and delay more. So if they do pull off and come back to him, well, it's going to be fairly easy for him to just smoke off that Banana and look, he can play this passive. Well, Skrunk took a little bit of a licking from that Krieg. And it pushed Alex back just in case. He's going to be in the correct position considering the bomb has made its way now to the bottom of Banana. Ooh, look at Skrunk's one way. It's clearing up, though. Oh. Smoke for CT side. Skrunk will throw a flashbang over towards water. That's where Alex pokes nice up and in. What a great flashbang. It's one in 70% of the next one, but the T's now have the CT's cut off. As long as the front line is at least not held up by Skrunk. Who oh. cannot defend. So 
a two on two, just like it was in the pistol round with four seconds left. The bomb just now gets planted. A one on one. The Krieg's there. The fake flash oh. comes out and it pushes Patrick behind the corner. No way. The real flash, though. That was pistol, right? The first one was. Awesome. Not from Patrick. Patrick's was yeah, a real yeah, flash. Yeah, from, yeah, from, 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 from inside the site. I loved it. I'm all yeah, about the I'm all about the little things, you know? I'm all about the little things. I was actually hoping he was gonna win the round off of that. As soon as I saw that come out and it worked, I was like, you deserve that you deserve the round now, man. <laughs> it pulled him off. I mean it's great too, because it's the timing is not easy to work with that. Because the time it takes for your brain to recognize that that's not really a flashbang is less than a quarter of a second it's very fast so the fact that he was able to peek out of oranges immediately thereafter that's a tiny window that he has to hit mm -hmm. light well he's got a pretty large window as he picks down towards middle finds himself an easy first frag of the round does look like wind and rain just very slow once again here yeah they'll do the same thing they'll just announce their presence on the top of mid and the apartments and the boiler and they'll try and get a response elicited by the uh, the utility alex actually spots freight towards that banana area and Jenko with a nice 1d towards patrick under porch yeah, patrick was in the process of throwing the molotov so he committed to it he tried to take a little bit of a cover behind the porch but head's too big he gets uh at least Lopped off and now top mid control, held by wind and rain. You already see friendly fire rotate in though. Alex is in a great spot as well. Double kill? Oof, a lot of damage, but nothing past that. Well, so I can throw a flashbang out. He's got some help in here with light that's holding at least the lane side of things. Psychon's so got two, and he'll get the third nice as well. Round. Gotta remember that these were just pistols and mixed armor coming into the round for Wind and Rain. They were not able to get across over towards Porch to recover that one weapon that was dropped back there because the AWP was just constant, constantly watching. We will see an AWP come on the field now. Hems He's gonna go ahead with that best spawn here, Dallin. It does look like middle, maybe? No, he's just, yeah. Okay, so he's just gonna go ahead and hold mid. I thought he was gonna maybe push onto banana, but friendly fire, very aggressive once again towards B. Interesting, Ooh. CT Molly. In case there was a rush, I mean, when they rounded the corner from CT towards the B site, they bounced a, an incendiary off the skybox and down into the car, virtually. The CTs did. So I doubt that that was Ooh. a mistake. Okay. Probably to, to at least assert dominance at top banana. I like this early presence of friendly fire is done here. It's actually kept the wind and rain pretty honest. They've moved back towards middle here where we see the three members of the CT side just anchored in pit. And this double pit setup, I mean, it's one of the strongest setups you can have in all of Counter Strike here. They've got additional help with Alex that's at Moto as well. So this is going to be a tough nut to crack for Wind and Rain. They need to get around onto the board because this is going to be a pistol if they don't get the bomb planted as well. So it's not looking pretty. Patrick got that first frag. And uh, where was that? That was definitely to the A site. So they're in the right ballpark. Look at Alex on the one way right now. Or is it a one way? It might be just off the mark. He didn't spot him. He's in amongst nice. the cheese. There's the first. He'll turn around for the second. The confusion was there because of a flashbang that came in. That should be it. Four on two with a wounded tease and only 20 seconds to work with. The double pit turret defense is still good. It wasn't even really used yet. That was such a great flash there to just allow Alex now, as that smoke's fading, Dallas, to push aggressively past the tease. That was all three of them were caught. He picks up the opera in the back, turns around, gets one more. And at that point, the double pit setup still hasn't even struck. I mean, we saw it get a kill earlier, but they still thought it was one person in big pit. So great job out of friendly fire yet again on another gun round. Aggression early. Second, they'll come up into the apartments, especially since this, the T's don't have the the op or any kind of real rifles. They can abuse the top mid and run straight across the top of that, get into boiler and get up into the balcony as quick as they can to pick off any of the T's at a huge disadvantage coming up all mid.
almost unpunishable. If the T's are on pistols, it's, yeah, you can't stop them from crossing. They're gonna kill somebody in alt mid. Yeah, it, that fight is pretty hard to win. Even the banana, right? Even if the T's are on pistol and nades start raining down, how are you gonna fight that back, right? Uh, if you're pushed out banana, it's really hard. And right now we see wind and rain. They're kind of just in a limbo. And halls is what they're gonna end up towards. Pop flash coming out. No, Frey actually doesn't flash them out halls. He flashes up lane. We got a cross. They did get across, but they do not clear Patrick out. They can't clear anything out on that site. It's only Frey. He's got a CZ and a chance to pick up a kill. But other than that, it was a perfect full house. Patrick and Sicken on the A site, uh, making that one easy peasy. Hardly even any damage done to them. So they are able to pad up the cache a little bit further. And it's going to be another rifle round. And it'll continue on this path. Because we haven't seen a bomb plant for quite some time. Four rounds ago is when we saw a bomb plant from Wind and Rain. So if that continues, it'll be... Full by pistol armor, full by pistol armor. Light with a very quick cross towards all. Ooh. Fires that shot right by Hems. A little bit of banana presence very early on from friendly fire, but they're actually going to give it up this time, Dallas. And this is a little change of pace from the CTs who have generally fought it early on and then fallen back towards that mid round part. They're going to fall back very early here alongside the A guys that aren't even playing aggressively on mid. Once again, we have the holes and the pit, big pit setup. Took light about a half a second to realize that the, the rounds that were coming through that apartment halls was from balcony room. So he tried to send, uh, send an op shot back through it, but a little bit slow to react in that. And Wind and Rain, after hearing that op, may have swayed towards this B site instead where Alex, as well as Skrunk is. And they put Skrunk into a new position. He is up on top of the new box. Great spot as well. He's able to drop that Molotov too, if need be. Psyching now rotating over with a Molotov of his own here. I mean, that's two Molotovs to stop this B rush. How did Wind and Rain take this site? I mean, they haven't even crossed car yet, and their that's CT smoke is fading. It's gone now. So now that the CT defense is there, double Molotov up and in. Another CT smoke comes out. A third Molotov. Oh my god. There's nowhere to run. Bomb down. Yeah, and another flash. That's going to be a beautiful flash. Rotation actually. coming in. He's not even going to start to fall off. There, he finally does. One on four for Jenko. He's gotten himself one, but with 13 seconds left, and the bomb tumbled onto the threshold of the site, he has to expose himself to multiple players. Nearly pulls off the kill against Light there. Went over his head. The furthest member made it just to the start of the staircase for Wind and Rain. That was yeah. such... A great uh, b-hole from Friendly Fire. Rotations coming in one after the other as well. Yeah, that's uh, it, eventually there was a triple molly up there. They had one in CT, they had one in front of the stairs, and they had one that they dropped over in water. There was nowhere for Wind and Rain to go. It was just a, a, a full stop against them. And this flashbang that came from the top of the new box, he th through the flashbang, it bounces off the edge of the fountain. Yeah, and, and then drops just under. It just drops pops. under the ledge of water, so he can stay in his position and still stare oh. that flashbang down. But it blinds everybody mm -hmm, that's coming mm -hmm. across the CT. So he's just fighting confidently. Anybody that wants to take a fight against him, well, they're going to get blind. That's a great flash there. Yeah. I mean, what, what more can you say about that behold? I mean, we can we can analyze everything, but mainly it was just friendly fire playing an exceptional exceptional ct side that flash that flash is something else he can stare it down it just it's drops it drops underneath the ledge of water and you just can't <laughs> it's not it's not doing anything to you it's awesome so a 7-0 start and a very fast 7-0 start it feels like to me as well and wind and rain are actually gonna buy back into this round without the bomb plant so they are gonna suffer utility wise a little bit but they favor their smokes they got four of those on board Fortunately, those smokes aren't going to hold the show here. The Molotov's really lacking as they only have two. A very fast B now, and it's going to be Scrum getting two very easy kills. Actually, Alec picks up a little bit of a Molotov kill there. Oh, but Janko turns okay. him back. That's great, too, because the round was over if he didn't get those kills. He stands his ground in banana. <gasps> Doesn't. But there's a flash. <laughs> he didn't check. Yeah, he, he lurks by the sandbags. But you know what's weird about that? He didn't realize that Alex was still alive and Alex got a Molotov kill earlier in the round. See what Attention I'm saying there? So he, mu 
Yeah, so he's, he might have thought Alex rotated back into sight or maybe left, but if he had known, I think he would have checked that spot for sure. Arch smoke. So for now, that is going to be pushing uh, Sicken ahead of Moto a little bit. And he has to at least alert Alex that he is vulnerable for both sides right now. So Alex will start to come back. Seems like there may have been a step move too, because Alex has fallen all the way back to Speedway and looking through Arch. So it seems like Friendly Fire are uh, a step ahead of the game. First kills there, that's against the pit player. Both players alive on site. And here comes some, well, it looks like a smoke. I don't know how much use that would have done. But the bomb's planted <laughs> two on two. We've seen this many times before. Hems is very low right now. Oh, and the double peak. Alex has no chance against it. Wind and rain get themselves on the board. Nice peak from them, taking the fight to the enemy. It's, they timed it really perfect, too, because right when Sicken pulled the smoke out, he was just in the cubby spot in front of Moto and just got dink, dink, and dead. And I don't even know if that smoke came out of his hand. So it was perfect timing, just as Friendly Fire had slightly disarmed themselves with utility. Wind and Rain put one up onto the board. Oh. Try for a very cheeky boost towards that right side to get Hems, but it's actually Alex to take down Astro towards B. You know about the run boost there towards middle uh, yeah. from March side? You just send somebody across. Yeah, that's what they were they were going for that one. Well, if they did that, light actually poked out for a peak in mid, and then somebody may have stepped on his head after that. But light light went for uh, an aggressive peak there. Uh oh, light might be in trouble. He felt that they were starting to push up towards mid, and they would round to that corner. That's going to be sicken. That's underneath porch. They'll get a fresh smoke to top mid. And with a minute and change left onto the round, I thought this was going to be very scary for Wind and Rain if they had pushed into that three-man position oh. at uh, top mid. Great flash to get mid-control. Now the lane hit does come in. Patrick does trade it out on lane. And we're into a 1v4 here. With only Frey left. And the bomb's been spotted and downed. So now here comes everybody from Friendly Fire. They stepped on it. Alex? Oh, <laughs> so oh, I thought yeah, that was you lag. Thought that was lag. Yeah, I thought that you... was lag. Dude, light pulled the trigger, waited, hesitated, hesitated, then he died. I was like, whoa, what? Oh, because I had a split second of thinking that as well, and then I realized it was Alex that rotated in. But friendly fire, as quick as they lose one down, they're right back on the horse. Eight to one's our score line, and wind and rain, force buying up here. And here's the same thing. Friendly Fire recognized that they're going to be on pistols, and they Indeed. pushed aggressive. They crossed into the apartments from top mid. They even pushed down mid a little bit and looked into the alt mid side. So that there's no map control if you're on pistols on Wind no. Rain's side. Friendly Fire actually didn't go too aggressive towards Banana, though, and I kind of agree with that choice, that decision to really not fight those CZs in their own territory, right? That Those close engagements here. But you do see a heavy arch stack from the CTs. Let's see how they're able to defend against this one. They got a lot of flashbangs. Hell, they got a lot of everything. There's a lot riding on this round for Wind and oh. Rain. Nice shot. Frey will just turn the corner. Light was able to pick one of the CTs off, but Frey's still going. He's gotten himself an AK now. In fact, there's plenty of guns for Astro to choose from as well. But he's gone into the apartment side. So your T's are split, relying heavily on any kind of 1vx situation. Now they're going to start to coalesce. However, the heavy feet from Astro has alerted Alex and the remaining CTs of the position. Oh, and Alex hears that scope as well from the op on Astro. So he knows. He knows. Hey, they're right on the other side of me, Arch side. Just everybody anchor up. I'll let you know what's happening in a little bit. And as we near the 22nd mark, Patrick, once again, just hiding in this big pit area. What a strong position to be in. The T's have to overextend to see him. And are they going to do that? The molly into the back of the pit. They check it, but they don't look deep enough into it. With 10 seconds, the bombs just starts to get planted. There you go. And just like they had lost a round, they wait until somebody's vulnerable. And there it is. Frey was trying to hold on a 1v3. He had gotten himself one, not good enough. And if you thought it was bad before, when Wind and Rain got an eco reset, their force buy in the following round just now is also met with a demise. We are going to see that full save. And as we near the end of the first half here, Friendly Fire really starting to run away with this. I imagine maybe we'll even see a 
MP9 come on the field? Maybe Patrick picks one up and looks to farm? No. Okay. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, right? He knows they're going to be on full eco this round. We only see a couple pistols being bought up. But he does opt for those M4s, and we do see the double op setup make its return here in this round. Wind and rain onto a full eco. Where are they going to head? I mean, there were three kills in that last round. So it's not out of the question that wind and rain could come roaring back into this. But at best, a 10-5 at best and that's a stretch right nice pick towards Hollis to start this round up sickens up on top of the porch it's been boosted up there here and... comes b oh yeah b hit alex Ooh. misses his shot takes 20 damage he'll throw molotov setting the water on fire in the fountain He's got help here, too, so there's really no threat. And in fact, still more presence coming from Light. He'll be crossing the CT side. It seems maybe just a half a step behind the T's as they cross. No, but they're still hesitating. The rotations come in as well. Light with that AWP. Misses the first shot. Where do they go from here? Here comes the rifles and the flashbangs. Light is all over the place, but he was only there as a distraction. I think he fired off two, two op shots. We both missed. At least alerted the team that there's two guys at water. And there's the 10 1. This would have to be an amazing uh, turnaround for wind and rain. From here you on out, it would have to be perfect. You mentioned the water being lit on fire. And I want to know the science behind that. I'm going to have to get you to explain it to me at some point this evening here. Sure. Okay? sure. Yeah, you can light water on fire. There's a whole bunch of different ways to light it on fire. I'm interested in knowing. Because I see it in movies all the time and it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But we'll get to it. Right. Uh-oh. Boost over top of the smoke in mid. Oh. Link. oh, they didn't get him, actually. Light's still standing on top of his teammate's head. Sicken's able to get the return frag on that as well. That was a bit scary if you're a fan of friendly fire. They got snuffed out of that first, but still got the kill and started the retreat. It was two players that were vulnerable. Sicken actually rotated in just in the nick of time there to help out that mid hit. Okay, it looks like a bomb plan actually is going to happen here. Alex is off, was forced off at the corner, and he is now back into construction with the last bits of real utility for the T side being used just to secure the bomb down now. But Dell, on the CT side, really, the only thing we can say is that they're able to smoke off banana, maybe the triple box area, but no Molotovs to push any CTs out. So we're going to have a frag fest here. Wind and rain. I mean, set up in this post mic, good opportunity to pick up a second round. Very late flank as well from Patrick coming in. Yeah, they're waiting for Patrick to get into a position to really close down onto the site with as many bodies as possible. They just use a smoke to plug up the new box as best as they can. One for one. Here comes Alex now with a deagle. Jenko is in dark. Plenty of cover Maybe. fire with Patrick on that late rotator, late wrap around banana because that player that's in dark has to swing so wide to get to the coffin's angle. At that point, the late flank from Patrick, there it is. That's what they were waiting for. Him to basically come in late, secure the round. That's exactly what happens. Friendly fire, a nice little retake out of them. No Molotovs needed. And when the rain, well, they're going to continue being the seeker for a second round. Look at light. Bam, baby. Good start to the round for him. Seems like every round, Wind and Rain are just a step behind. Well, honestly, they've been doing a good job on the friendly fire side, mixing it up with the AWP. Sometimes light, he's going to be at the end of hole. Sometimes he's boosted up in his smoke middle. Sometimes he's just opping arch side. It it keeps his T's on their toes. Oh, oh, man. This is Patrick. That was just a wide swing out of the uh, out of the porch. He's able to pick up one, and now the remaining players just heads poking out of the apartments, and that is a 12th round. Now, I, I'm trying to help at this point. I've been watching it. Astro is 0 and 13. I'm gonna try and cast or curse this so that he can get a kill. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen a player not get a. I've seen a player not get a kill in a half. I've never seen a player not get a kill in an entire game. It's only happened to me once in my entire lifetime when I was 16 years old. 
That that's how rare it actually is to go full O and uh, whatever it is. So at some point, right? You gotta put sixteen, yeah. Yeah, right. At some point, you gotta put yourself in a corner and just find somebody walking by you, right? <laughs> Collect some chickens and create a bait setup like you did earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smoke top mid, however, they're already across this one. Oh, but they don't check the corner. Sicken from the cubby has the first. Now he's hoping for some extra help here. It doesn't come in time. Light is just a half a step behind. It does cost the CT a body. And this AK for Jenko is really all the hope that they got. Maybe the CZ out here as well. They're going to boost up over the smoke. Maybe even get up on top of the porch. Oh, I thought that was going to be Astro to pick up the frag. It's actually Frey. But the rotation is in now from Light getting one. Maybe Astro gets this and gets this plant off. He hears the hell out of this scope. He knows where one of the CTs are. Now has actually found the cover of the pit, but, you know, Light doesn't know that Astro's up oh. in this defensive position. I think, I think that, let, too. yeah, I think that that triggered with that Molotov towards mid. Astro's like, hey, he thinks I'm he not in sight yet. Box. This is going to be weird. Incredible. He has to make quick Incredible. work. Oh, I guess. Astro, Just MVP get one, buddy. for the round. Get one, buddy. Oh, blind! No! Oh. Here they come. Sprunk, pre-fire in the corner. Astro's got the right line. Yeah. And Astro's got a kill! 1v2 now, and he's burning, burning some time. He is making himself as oh. skinny as possible and almost actually clutches this one out. I knew it. I cast or cursed it, and he gets a kill. Fantastic. Dude, if he had more HP, I want to say that Astro would have got on the board with the 1v3 clutch. I think that's the way that one would have played out. Good effort from him. Hype play. <laughs> <laughs> I was just really excited that I correctly cast or cursed it. Amen. Alright. I mean... This match, Dallas, it seems pretty cut and dry as is, right? I mean, guys, we, we got another match coming up. It's going to be your Onyx versus Royal Bandit. So if this one hasn't uh, kept you entertained, well, hopefully the next one will. There's another round where Wind and Rain start one man down. Fairly certain that's at least 90% of these rounds, Friendly Fire have been able to open up with the first bang. That mostly coming off the back of the ops or the banana pressure with a rifle. I'm just gonna go check the table real quick to just see where everybody's lying in regards to these two teams. Dude, the T's have nowhere to run. I'm surprised they even got one kill right there. Alex has a deagle at first oranges. Not long enough to live. A three on three retake, point blank. Light doesn't use the scope and just shoves the barrel right into the belly of Link. And it is still a two on two. Sicken will be coming across banana side. And Light will be responsible for everything construction. And CT, what? He hits him through new box in the face. He tracks him perfectly. And it is Jenko alone. 1v1 now. Back and forth it may go. But Jenko has the control and the timing. Oh, oh. He had the bomb to play with, but the bomb had been tapped by Light. So he paid respects to it. So... Just to let you know, Dal, okay? If Wind and Rain had won this match, yep. they would have passed Friendly Fire in this table. Friendly Fire are currently sitting at 8 and 7, Wind and Rain at 7 and 6. Ah. So, even though this scoreline is telling us eh, these are two very different teams in terms of skill, um, they aren't. Their season is around the same. They, they're, they're coming out with the same kind of record at the end of the season, but Boy, this is a one lopsided match right now. Dude, speaking of like when it rains, it pours. I did not <laughs> know that the op could wall bang through new box at all. Oh yeah, in in the in through the little uh, through the little slits. Yeah, good luck yeah, hitting like it. In, in between the cylinders mm -hmm. is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he yeah, hits yeah, him yeah. right in the face. So we are into the pistol round of the second half. Friendly fire are actually pushed back. Jump player down underneath. Astro, Astro. Then jumps down. He's on the board for a second time. Alex, uh, look at this pistol round. We have a guy in A site, a guy just in the halls, and a guy still in T spawn. <laughs> oh my oh, God! They're Alex. winning fights. They're playing the gladiator. Place. I think they're playing gladiator. Are they? 
They're pushing up. Well, our gladiator right now is Alex. He's dead now. Both players make it a beeline towards the B site, but it seems like Jenko is aware of this weakness. And now it's obvious that the smoke... Oh, God, that was close. Almost picked off Skrunk, who's the healthy player. Nice little double peek there. Saiken picks up Jenko now, and it's all on to Link here to keep friendly fire off their 15th. They hear Link. Oh, they're gonna oh, line up. Nice oh, nice shot. That was actually a little bit of extra bonus damage to Skrunk, who's now ring around the Rosie. <laughs> He'll go all the way out. There's no kit, but there's a smoke. Bomb is touched again, and Skrunk has to has to play this. He doesn't need to re-peek, not Good anymore, hat. after he saw Link was gone, but that is the 15-1 scoreline. It's all but over. Just a matter of time here, Dallas. Where do we go? If we're wind and rain, I think we're just going to see a little plow towards the middle. Just a very fast play. Well, they're going to oh, play okay. this one straight, looks yeah. like. Yeah. Nice little damage from Jenko onto light. Mac 10s are on the front line. That's going to be Patrick as well as Sicken, who now swing around the corner and make their way into the upper apartments right now. So, presence towards A forces Jenko across to the arch side with his scout. He's now going to come in addition, and maybe even Frey comes all the way around the corner. So, it's going to be B side weak. And this little just action with Mac 10s up in the apartments has forced an overreaction from wind and rain. That was the best shot I've seen all game. Tell me we caught. I didn't see it. I was watching over the uh, A site. But yeah, now the CTs are rebounding back. They've got no kit either, and they're taking chip damage on entry, though. Hems has the first. They're starting to lose now. They've got a long flank coming around still. So the two players that are in construction are all that remains. And Patrick should close this out, but he cannot. It's Frey alone. Oh man, nice shot from Al. 